Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is an introduction to uncertainty. Uncertainty is the topic of Chapter 7 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. Now, to situate where we are with this lecture and the upcoming lectures as opposed to what we have done in the past, before, Albert knew what Barbara's bottom line was, or at least he knew what Barbara's expectation about Barbara's prospects elsewhere, what her outside option was. And so the information that Albert knew was identical to the information that Barbara knew. What we're venturing into now is a situation where one party knows something that the other party doesn't. And specifically, what we're going to be focusing on here and most of the rest of these lectures on uncertainty is a situation where Albert doesn't know Barbara's bottom line. So one example of this is the following game tree. This is a little bit more complicated than what we've seen before, so bear with me for a moment as I try to explain what's going on here. Let's ignore the top of this for a moment and just focus on that game tree on the left. That game tree on the left should look really familiar. This is a situation where Albert is making an offer to Barbara, 0 to 1, a division of the surplus, which Barbara can accept and implement that settlement or reject and get something else on her own. So in that case, her outside option is 0.25 and Albert ends up with nothing. If we again ignore the top of the game tree, but just look to the right, we see another very familiar situation. In fact, it's exactly what we looked at before, except now Barbara, if she rejects the offer, has an outside option that's worth 0.5 as opposed to just 0.25. Now, what we're representing up top is the idea that Albert doesn't know which way the situation is going. So we have this autonomous actor that we call nature, which chooses whether Albert is facing the weaker type with an outside offer of only 0.25 or a stronger type of Barbara who actually has an outside offer bigger equal to 0.5. So nature makes this move with probability P, Barbara is this weak type that has the outside option of 0.25, and with remaining probability 1 minus P, Albert has the situation where Barbara's outside option is equal to 0.5. And that dashed line that runs between the two cases represents the fact that Albert doesn't know which situation he's in, whereas Barbara, you notice that there is no dashed line that runs between the two Barbaras there, Barbara actually knows which situation she's in. So just to recap here, what this is essentially trying to do is look at a situation where Barbara knows what the offer that she has elsewhere is, but Albert does not. So that's a very plausible thing to think about, right? There are many cases, and we'll talk about this more as we go further into researching what uncertainty does to bargaining situations. There are many cases where it makes sense for Albert to know very closely, closely what Barbara's outside option is. But on the other hand, there are also plenty of situations that more resemble this sort of situation. So this is a very important situation to consider, and that's why we're going to be spending quite a few lectures actually analyzing this particular situation. Now... How do we go about solving this? Well, we can't just necessarily start all the way at the bottom and work all the way up to the top because there's a situation where Albert doesn't actually know which situation he's in. And so we have to do a little bit more legwork here to actually get to the solution. Now, what we can do, though, is start at the very bottom with Barbara's decision. Barbara knows which situation she's in. If she's actually this weak type, she knows that she's the weak type. So she can make the proper decision. She doesn't face any uncertainty like that. So if Barbara is in fact this weak type, she's going to accept any offer that's at least as good as 0.25. So any offer that's greater than that, Barbara is definitely going to accept. And any offer that's equal to that, well, she's indifferent. And so we're just going to suppose that she accepts in that case, just like we've always been doing in the past. Barbara knows this. She knows all the information so she can make the right decision here. Similarly, if we're in the other side, on the, in the other case where Albert is facing actually a strong type of Barbara, Barbara again knows that she's strong, she knows that her outside option is worth one half, and so she's willing to accept anything that is greater than or equal to one half. So those parts of the game tree are actually very easy to figure out. It's this last part of figuring out what Albert should do, given that he doesn't know whether he's on the left side of the game tree or the right side of the game tree. And this is actually fairly complicated because if you think about it, there are an infinite number of possible offers that Albert could give. 
there is a choice between zero and one. There are infinitely many numbers on that interval. And so Albert actually has to consider quite a few, in fact, infinitely many different choices here. And yet despite that, I'm going to make a claim here, and I'm going to prove that this claim is true. Albert's optimal offer is either 0.25 or 0.5. Again, we started out with an infinite number of possibilities. I'm claiming here that there's only two possible optimal offers that we really need to be considering. And to see why that's the case, let's look at a number line here. So imagine that this is the offer size ranging from 0 to 1. And notice that I've put the two different possible outside options from Barbara there, 0.25 if she's weak and 0.5 if she is strong. Let's think about these in cases. First, let's look at what's going on on the left here. If Albert offers an amount between 0 and 0.25, those are offers that Barbara is always going to reject. If she's weak, her outside option is worth 0.25, so she's not going to accept it. And if she's strong, her outside option is 0.5, she's definitely not going to accept it in that case. So either way, if Albert offers less than one quarter, Barbara is going to reject. Now, this cannot be optimal for Albert because Albert could offer some amount that at least some of the time Barbara would actually accept, and that would result in a positive expected value for Albert compared to what happens here if he offers an amount between 0 and 0.25. Barbara always rejects, and Albert receives a payoff of 0. So we know in this case, Albert will not be offering an amount between 0 and 0.25. That just can't be optimal for him. Now let's think about a situation where we are between 0.5 and 1, and we're thinking about a situation where we're actually greater than 0.5 here, not equal to 0.5, but strictly greater than 0.5, all the way up into 1. Well, these are situations where Barbara is always going to accept, regardless if she is weak or strong. That's because even if Barbara is the strong type and she receives a payoff of 1 half if she rejects Albert's offer, well... Here, she's getting more than that, so of course she's going to accept. And also, of course, the weak type is going to accept because the weak type was only getting 0.25. Now, if we think about this, we can actually reason why none of these offers are actually going to be optimal from the perspective of Albert. So think about this offer here. It looks like, what is that, about 0.7 or so. Well, if this, optimal, uh, rather, if this offer is optimal for Albert, there can't be a better alternative offer for Albert. And remember, if Albert offers this amount, Barbara accepts this amount, and Albert receives the remainder, which is essentially everything to the right of the arrow that I just drew. But compare that payoff for Albert to what happens if he were to offer this amount instead. So it's still true that Barbara is going to accept regardless of whether she's weak or strong, and Albert is going to receive the remainder. The difference here, though, is that Albert's remainder is larger because he's offering less to Barbara. So in this situation, Albert is better off than if he had made the offer that corresponds to the original arrow. Well, we can keep doing this again. This offer is going to be better than that second arrow that I drew, because again, Barbara is going to accept it, and that leaves more for Albert than if he had actually offered that second arrow. So he prefers offering the third arrow that I drew, the one all the way on the left, to either the middle one or the one on the right. But you notice that there's this recurring logic here. Anything that is on this interval, Albert would actually be better off shrinking the amount by a tiny little margin so that Albert gets the offer still accepted, but Barbara is receiving less and Albert is receiving more. And that's going to be true all the way up until we get to this cut point of one half. At this point, if Albert decreases the offer any more, it's no longer going to be true that Barbara is always going to accept because now a strong type of Barbara would, re, uh, would prefer to reject. So what we've done now is we've eliminated everything on the interval between one half and one as a possibility for an optimal offer, but one half is still in play. The other thing that we need to consider is the interval between one quarter and one half. Again, we're not going to be including those actual cut points of one quarter and one half, just things that are in between them. Well, in this case, we're looking at a situation where Barbara is going to accept if she's weak and is going to reject if she's strong. And this is just because her outside option is better for her if she is a strong type than accepting an offer inside of that interval. Well, by a similar logic to what we just looked at with the arrows in the previous case, we can see that any offer in this interval is not going to be optimal for Albert. Consider that offer there. That looks like about 0.45. Well, in one case where Barbara is strong, Albert is going to have his offer rejected. And in the other case, when she's weak, 
Barbara is going to accept, and Albert will receive the remainder, everything to the right of that arrow. Now, this cannot be optimal, because if you compare this offer to the offer that I just drew in, this arrow on the left, notice that the probability that Barbara accepts the offer is going to be identical. If she's strong, she's still rejecting, and if she's weak, she's still accepting. The difference between these two arrows, though, is this new arrow on the left, when Barbara is this weak type and accepts, gives Albert a greater share of the surplus, everything to the right, than the arrow on the right there. So by virtue of this, the arrow that I drew on the right cannot be an optimal offer for Albert. Well, the arrow I drew on the left there can't be an optimal offer for Albert either, because we can use the exact same logic for an offer that's slightly less. Again, the strong type of Barbara is going to reject, the weak type of Barbara is going to accept, and this is going to leave strictly more in that latter case for Albert than that middle arrow did previously. But this again is true for any offer on that interval until you cut it all the way down to 0.25. Now if you go any less than 0.25, you're no longer in a situation where the weak type of Barbara is going to accept. She's going to reject the offer, and Albert is going to receive a payoff of nothing. So again, to recap once more, we looked at a situation where there are infinitely many different offers to consider, and we've boiled it down to just two possibilities. Either Albert is going to offer one half, or he's going to offer one quarter. Well, which one is it? We can actually figure this out very quickly by doing a comparison between the two payoffs for making these offers. So notice that if Albert offers one half, then both types are going to accept, the strong type accepts and the weak type accepts. And so we don't need to be calculating any expectations here because we know exactly what happens in this case. Albert receives the remainder of the offer, which is one minus 0.5 equal to 0.5. So if, uh, if Albert offers one half, he's going to receive one half for sure in this case. Well, what about the other situation? What happens if he offers one quarter instead? This is a little bit more complicated. Barbara accepts if she's weak and rejects if she's strong. If she's strong, her outside option is better than this, so she's not going to accept the offer. Well, now we need to calculate an expectation. Remember that P is the probability that Barbara is weak, which means that Albert, when Barbara is weak, receives the remainder of the offer because Barbara is accepting in this situation where she's weak. So Albert receives the remainder, which is 1 minus 0.25 times the probability that this is actually happening because Barbara, it, Barbara is actually weak. So that's probability P. And then we add that to his payoff for what happens when Barbara is strong. Well, when, Bar when Barbara is strong, Albert gets nothing. The offer is rejected, and Albert receives his reservation value there. The value he gets for rejecting is equal to zero. That happens with probability 1 minus p. We multiply that together. Of course, the zero cancels it out. And so we see that Albert's payoff in expectation for offering one quarter is equal to 0.75 times p. And so to figure out which of these offers is better, well, we just have to compare the two. Albert should offer one quarter if his payoff for offering one quarter is greater than his payoff for offering one half. We know what those payoffs are from the previous two slides. When he offers one quarter, he receives 0.75 times P. When he offers one half, he receives 0.5. And so there's your inequality there. He prefers making that smaller offer if 0.75 times P is greater than one half. You simplify, you solve for P, you see that if P is greater than two thirds, in other words, if the probability that Barbara is weak exceeds two thirds, then he should make the aggressive offer, the offer that leaves less for Barbara. And by analogous argument, if P is less than two thirds, he should make the safe offer, the offer of one half, which guarantees acceptance. Now we've seen a whole bunch of different things in this lecture on this introduction to uncertainty. I have just shown you what the solution is to the game. I have not yet analyzed what's really going on here. And what's going on here is something known as a risk return trade-off, which is a very important concept in bargaining with uncertainty. So I'm actually going to analyze the results of this game and talk about why this model is actually really important if you're trying to understand what goes on in a bargaining situation. So I hope you I hope you enjoyed this introduction to uncertainty and I also hope to see you here next time. Take care.